Today's topic is challenging the ego. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. I assume that everyone in this room have faced challenges. Yes? No? Yes. Life itself is a challenge. Every day we face tests, whether physically or emotionally. Sometimes we feel we are stuck and we can't move forward. Sometimes we have to deal with very challenging relationships at work, at home, with family and friends. Raising kids is not an easy job. But there is one thing that binds us all, and that is that we can't escape from life's challenges. Challenges can be perceived as a threat or, as Yogananda said, as opportunities for further growth. Spiritual challenges empower us. They test our strength. They force us to put in practice the spiritual teachings and to step out of our comfort zone. Every desire we aspire for, every blessing we are seeking, is always accompanied by a challenge. Always. Absolutely always. The more sincere, sincere, is our desire to change, the more is the need to prove our sincerity and dedication through that given challenge. Maybe you have noticed already that all successful people in this world, they have invested time, energy, and dedication into their lives. If you want to become a happy person, you need to challenge yourself to smile more. If you want to be a generous person, if you want to attract abundance in your life, you need to challenge yourself to give more to others. If you want to become a loving person, you need to challenge yourself to use loving thoughts, loving words when you communicate with other people. If you want to become a deep meditator, you need to challenge yourself to meditate daily, twice. We want quick results with minimum effort. We demand God to perform miracles in our lives. And when he asks us to give in return a little bit more of our time, a little bit more of our dedication, we run away. Or we come up with a long list of excuses why we can't do that. I have no time. I'm too old. I'm too tired. I'm too restless. It's too far. It's raining. I don't feel like meditating now. Let me tell you something. It is very hard to get in shape spiritually if we only work out on Sundays. <laughs> if you don't challenge yourself, you don't know what you can become. There is a story in the autobiography of a yogi at the ashram 
of Sri Uteshwar after a long day of Yogananda serving hundreds of guests that they came to visit Sri Uteshwar after cooking, cleaning, being around with so many people. After a long day, I think it was almost midnight that his service ended. Sri Yuteshwar told Yogananda, I'm so pleased of how joyfully you have served today. You have done exactly what was expected of you. And I'm so pleased that I'm going to allow you to spend the rest of the night next to me. Yogananda was so happy. What an honor, what a privilege to spend the night with my guru, lying down next to him. That was around midnight. By one o'clock, Sri Yuteshwar gets up and starts just getting dressed and about to go on. Yogananda sees Sri Yuteshwar, but Guruji, where are you going? It's one o'clock. And Sri Yuteshwar said, well, I just had a vision of my disciples that they just missed the train and they will come to the ashram any moment. It's one o'clock. Let me just go down and prepare some meal for them. And Yogananda said, Guruji, it's one o'clock. Who is going to come now? And Sri Yuteshwar replies, you stay there, stay in bed. You have worked so hard. You can be here, but I'll go. And Yogananda Ji replied, Guruji, I'm going with you. Of course I'm going with you. So both of them go to the kitchen. They start preparing, cooking the meal, the rice, the dal. And at some point, Sri Yuteshwar look, looks, looks, yeah. Sri Yuteshwar looks into Yogananda's eyes and he tells him, tonight you have conquered fatigue and fear of hard work. It shall never bother you again in the future. Yogananda said, since, they, since that day onwards, he never felt tired again. The beautiful thing about this story is that Yogananda did what was expected of him. But what made the difference is that Yogananda challenged himself to do a little bit more that was asked of him that day. And that's when the blessing came. And that's Sri Yuteshwar's promise to all of us. If we do just a little more that is being asked of us. Just a little more than what is expected of us. Just a little more of what we are used to do. The blessings will always come, always. Look into that area of your life, into that specific practice that you know you can do just a little bit more. Give it a try for a month, <coughs> two months, and see what happens. Jai Guru. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to be back. How is everybody doing? Super? Where's the rest of my people? <laughs> Looks like this satsang was specifically for them, for those who aren't here. But those who are here have heeded the challenge, braved the rains, and thank you for that. Every time life challenges us, it's not so much fun. But often we challenge ourselves and have a lot of fun with it. Say we want to run a marathon. It's not easy. <laughs> I will run. I really challenge myself. I put myself actually through a lot of unnecessary pain. 
if I'm walking on the street and somebody, you know, mistakenly kicks me and I fall, that's one challenge. But if I'm playing football and somebody tries to tackle the ball from me and I fall, that's completely fun. I see that falling as like, maza aage aare aare yaar. And this falling as, you know, why is this happening to me? So what's the difference when life challenges us versus when we challenge ourselves? Why is one painful and the other joyful? Why are we willing to stay up all night to wish somebody happy birthday, but not willing to stay up all night to finish a project? Or to meditate? Because when we feel forced to do something, we reject it. When we think we're choosing to do something, we accept it. There was a study done between kids who versus homework and video games. Now, obviously, we know kids love video games, aren't too fond of homework. But scientists being how they are, they're very rational. They were looking at homework and video games as equal realities. Why? Because both of them are repetitive and hard. In video games, if it's a super easy video game, we're bored. We want next level, greater challenge, next boss con hai is level ka. The harder the game gets, the more fun the video game gets. So again, scientists said, why is it that there's a game which is hard and repetitive, but children love that, whereas homework, which is also hard and repetitive, no one wants to do. So again, we see the fact that one is forced and the other is not. However, what's also involved here is in the video game, we understand the rules and we understand the goal. In life, we don't. We think it's random. We think I fell because it was some random act of a random stranger who didn't know what he was doing. So I get upset at that challenge. However, in football, I understand this guy needs to tackle the ball from me. So I enjoy that particular challenge. When we understand the rules and we understand the goal, every challenge becomes joyful. Now, when we tell kids, don't lie, and we will, Mummy, why do you lie? Mummy, what do you say? Um, bas nahi karna chahiye. it's not good. We have no, re we have no reason why it's not good to lie, for two kids at least. And the child says, when he goes ahead and does lie, he realizes, why is it not good? This perfectly works out in my benefit. I not only escape punishment, you know, I get to kind of fool somebody. I mean, it's fun. But as a spiritual enthusiast, someone on the path, I know that if I lie, I'm going against the cosmic principles. And so my rules on the spiritual path are very clear. And the goal is very clear. But we don't use spiritual rules when we're playing life. So we get confused. We're not using the rules we know and understand. We're not using the goals we have set for ourselves when we play the game of life. And there are two words in our dictionary, in our daily use, that if we are to challenge the ego, here's the beauty of this. If you challenge yourself, life will stop challenging you because you take over its job. If you challenge yourself, life will no longer challenge you. That's important for us to know and understand. But this challenge is not, I'm going to challenge myself by taking on a new project and then work harder and stay longer at the office. This is the challenge of the ego. Because if you only challenge yourself for egoic, profitable, selfish motives, life will still continue to challenge you 
on your ego because that's the only purpose life serves to free us from ego bondage the only purpose but if we decide we're going to challenge ourselves and free ourselves from ego bondage life will no longer challenge you and to do that we need to remove two words from our daily vocabulary first word no Narayani says I say no a lot and I can't say no to that right now because otherwise I'll only prove a point <laughs> so I'll just say yes that's true and I'm going to challenge myself in front of all of you, in front of Narayani, that the next time I say no, Narayani has full authority to remind me of this moment. So that I'm supposed to say yes. Now let's see if she uses this selfishly <laughs> or for my benefit. That we leave in her hand. That's her challenge. But I'm not talking about saying yes. Because we all say a lot of yeses. Kal pakka mein sat sankele aa raha hu. That brings me to the next word, but. I want to come, but. I want to meditate, but. Constantly, we undermine our very desire to be free. By giving, and this is the tricky part, a very rational and valid excuse. It's not even that we're jhoot bol rahe. We do, but it is raining. But I do have children. But I do have a job. They're all real. The question is, what game are you playing? If you're pay playing the game, I just want to go to work and life is just this little world and, all I, and I have no idea why I'm doing anything, then we're all doing a fabulous job already. But if you're playing the game, I want to be free. You can't play it with the rules of I'm just going to my job and I'm just going to do whatever without really understand, without really being aware. It all comes back to awareness that our affirmation was about. I have to remind myself and choose consciously. I have put a game hai. I can't play FIFA with Mario Brothers ka rules. I can't play the spiritual game if I'm constantly going to then revert back to the rules of my daily, mundane, material life. I have to choose. I have to challenge the ego. And this is the challenge. Removing these two words from your vocabulary is going to be a challenge. No and but. And once we start to do that, once we take on that, life, believe me, will stop challenging you. Because you start doing its job. In the early days of Ananda, not so early, say 10, 15 years into Ananda, early enough for us, there was this period where you know people would come, people would go, Sometimes people would have stayed 10 years and then one day they decided they wanted to, you know, go move out of the community, go back, start working again, whatever their realities were. And somebody asked Swamiji, you know, why after all these years, I mean, here are these people, they've dedicated, you know, seemingly their lives to the spiritual path. Why after all these years uh, do they leave? And Swami said, because they've used up all the spiritual karma they had in this life. That's a scary thought. It means we only get so many tries before this life ke liye khatam. It is not an infinite game every lifetime where wo lifetime aata rahega ki shoot kar diya, mar gaye, fir next spawn aa gaya. Aayega do teen baari aayega, char aayega, panch baari aayega. At some point, you say, okay, that's enough. That's the number of tries you had in this life. We'll wait for the next. It's a scary thought if we assume just because I'm on this path, just because I've taken discipleship, I've taken Kriya, that I'm naturally going to stick it out till the end. 
how many people have taken Kriya. And I can call them up today and I can ask them, how is their practice going? And you know what I will hear? But. I want to meditate. Oh, I wanted to come today to the center. And it has nothing to do with us. Maybe Narayani and I are doing a horrible job and the center is just not going to attract people. But even if that were true, it shouldn't matter at all because this is your guru's home. And this is between you and him. And you have to challenge that or you will run out of tries. But here we are, we still haven't run out of tries. That means now is the moment. And especially now, as Narayani said, when it's raining, <laughs> this is the moment to say, come what may. I will come to the center. I will make one added effort, one more, just as your Narayani's story about Master said, one beyond what I would normally do. Come here, meditate here, be here, do something, one step more. Many blessings.